and hello welcome back today we're going to finalize our series on the recovery with no money and what i do what does the healthy life of a person in recovery looks like so i'm gonna cover after dinner i i have dinner at five i think i included the dinner in the last video um if not i'll include it here but what i do after dinner is do ccft that is good for digestion and it's just keeps the hunger at bay um, when I was having hunger before, uh, especially at night time because I used to snack heavily at night. So that's what I call my personal time. So my husband liked to tinker with his bike or do things, kitties entertain. So that's kind of where I have time to do my personal or things from the house. So from five, after you know 5 15 that i have eaten 5 30 to 7 i will have music work on music if i have something specific to work on or i will order online i do a lot of online surfing because i really look for specific stuff um, and watch tv i like watching korean soap operas because they're entertaining enough but really light where they don't stress you or make you suffer so it's just like the perfect kind of watching kind of not thing or the new stuff like that so this is the most important time because i i work on a specific stuff so while i watch tv or i do some some surfing online I will be doing like a balance exercise or very specific. So right now I had an issue with a knee where I noticed I couldn't squat properly and I tried to figure it out by myself. And like I told you, we have a physiotherapist as part of my job, as a perk of my job. Um, so we don't pay, but I went to the physiotherapist and I was like, hey, I've been working on this leg and it's just not going away. And she determined that it wasn't my knee, but very tight quads. So she gives me the exercises that I'm gonna do. But if I'm not working like on a specific targeted muscle issues, I will target what I'm working on. So whether it's balance, Asian squat. So I always try to squat Asian, um, the Asian squat, um, because it helps you stabilize the core. Um, or I will do, um, whatever it is that I need to target. So if I'm um, trying to get my quads looser, I underestimated the atrophy and the shrinkage of muscles with age, especially since I have CFS and I didn't move a lot. So I'm working on getting that back, that flexibility and some of the muscle movement um, back, okay? So I will work whatever that is that day, whether my shoulders, you know, my neck hurts, whatever it is that I need to target. So that's a very specific targeted stretching. Um, I will like the physiotherapist put heat. I couldn't do heat back in the day because remember I have pots. So the vasodilation of the heat was a challenge, but now I can handle it. So I will put heat on you know, right now I'm working on my um, right knee. Uh, so I put it on my thigh because it's a quad thing. So I'll put my heating pad in the leg and then I'll uh, stretch for whatever exercises she gave me for that day. She says three times a day sometimes, but that's when kind of focus on it. Um, and then I'll do it throughout the day if I can. But I, I think the importance of that time is starting to wind down starting to focus on things that I need, kind of measuring my progress and say, wow, especially with the Asian squat, when I started, I couldn't even do it. And I was like, oh, look, I can hold it for a second. Oh, look, now I can hold it for five seconds. Oh, I can go all the way down now. All those little things. Uh, and with balance, I have um, improved a lot of my balance. So that's very nice. And I told you before, like my balance was the worst and it's still kind of depth perception issues and stuff like that. Um, but working on coordination, I see metrics and that kind of stuff. Um, from eight to nine, I watch something with hobby. I try to have hobby time. Sometimes from five to seven, if I haven't started stretching stuff, he stretches too. 
so i will if he starts stretching i follow with him and it's just a way to do what i need to do and spend time with him or i will go outside and we'll have a quick chat and sit outside and enjoy a coffee hit the coffee meeting um and we talk about the day or something like that um planning the next day and then from eight to nine we watch something whatever show we're watching at the time and then you know the drill because this is what i started this series where at eight where we start watching something all the lights go out and we start having the lamp lighting and then the first video starts okay so very simple uh, very targeted and that's the last of this series next we're gonna cover movement how to implement movement what did i do wrong um what worked what didn't work i do need to do a lot of research and a lot of planning for that one because i want to give you some uh raw b and what does that look like and um, i'll need some time to get that video ready so i don't know if it will be the next video or if i need to give you an update because i'm still working on the do's and don'ts of movement but the minute that i have that video ready that will be kind of the next focus will be uh, because for me that was the most challenging thing of recovery how do i incorporate movement when i have so much post orthostatic in, uh, intolerance sorry so post exertional malaise like when i did this and i'll be like dying uh, so that was very very challenging for me and i could not find the right approach i've tried it all i relapsed three times exercising because i didn't know what i was doing so um, even though things are per case by case basis, I think I know what to watch for. I know what we shouldn't do, should do, kind of watch it. Um, so I feel pretty confident with all my failures that I can get a good list um, of what I did wrong and what went wrong and why. Um, so that I can share and avoid so that you guys avoid the mistakes that I made if possible So anyways, thank you so much for watching if you haven't please subscribe and rest well